Hello. In this technical video, I will focus on data lake tables. I'll start by talking about the advantages of Parquet files versus text files while focusing on how Delta Lake solves a lot of these limitations and help Parquet files become a fully functional data warehouse. To explain the merge capability of Delta, I will show slow changing dimension use cases type 1, 2, and 4 and how they can be implemented with Talent and Delta Lake. I'll explain the schema evolution capabilities that come with Delta as well as explain some of the table optimization mechanisms that it brings. Before we continue, I would like to spend a moment and point out the advantages of Parquet files versus text files and also the downsides of Parquet files. This will help us better understand the advantages of Delta Lake, which is based on Parquet. Parquet is a columnar storage, which means the data is physically stored with a column orientation as opposed to a delimited text file that is stored with row orientation. Columnar storage is typically used for analytical purposes and that's why data warehouses like Redshift and Snowflake also use it physically. This means that Parquet is good for analytics. It suits distributed processing. It's great for white tables because you can always work with a subset of the columns without a full scan of the file, like in text. It has a built-in mechanism for predicate and projection pushdown, which is a fancy term for query optimization both on the column level as well as on the record level. And finally, columnar storage is better for compression, which saves space on the disk, which means less cost. So what are the limitations of Parquet? The very first one is that it's still a file, and files are immutable. You can add more files, but if you want to update or delete it, so it would behave like a table, you'd have to do a full rewrite, which is very expensive for big tables. It does not have built-in schema evolution capabilities. That really depends more on the consumer. Also, historization and versioning requires specific design in the process. Query optimization as well is supported, but again, depends mostly on the process the user would build around the creation and maintenance of the file. All these limitations are exactly what Delta Lake attempts to solve. Just a note before we begin. This video is a part 2 video. In a previous video titled Delta Lake Basics, I've discussed Delta Lake files and features such as schema evolution, versioning, and time travel. That video was about how to interact with Delta Lake files, which are an open source product. As opposed to this video, in which I will talk about Delta Lake SQL tables and what you can do with them. So first of all, what are Delta tables and what is the difference from Delta files? So Delta files are actually an open source project. You can, without being a customer of Databricks, you can write and read Delta files directly on a file system. However, if you want to create tables around them and use Spark SQL tables, you need to be a customer of Databricks. Um, that allows you, with a running Databricks cluster, to write tables, um, use SQL to query that as if it was a data warehouse, and then you can still access those tables with Python, Scala, and, um, and R. However, now you also have access to these tables via JDBC, which means it functions as if it was a data warehouse. So you can also run queries and run a dashboard against it. In addition, it gives you some more functionality around update and merge, which you don't normally have with files. And also it gives you some out of the box functionality around optimizing tables and queries. At Talon, we've been supporting the ability to write and read files. This is what I talked about in the previous videos. But actually, since summer of 2020, we also support the ability to interact directly with Databricks tables. That means having that metadata layer on top of the files and then interacting, interacting with those files as if it was a data warehouse. We have added the capability to our Data Lake integration to create a table, update a table, merge a table, um, including very you know advanced capabilities of merging that I will touch upon in this video next. So let's start with the first example, which is the slow changing dimension type one. Slow changing dimension type one is a basic table update. It's very easy to understand. Um, we have an initial table here that you can see. 
and that table already exists. Now we're going to update this table with another data set, but the data set has only differences in one record. That is the, uh, the record for the customer name Carter. The class type is going to be changed and also the date of last updated change. So when the update will occur, you will see the changes only in run one record and the rest will be the same. Now, this is very easy to do with the regular database, but keep in mind that if we're talking about something like a Hive table or talking about Parquet files, this would require to rewrite the entire file normally. So in Delta, you can do the slow changing dimension without the full rewrite. And Delta tables allow you to seamlessly update the table as if it was a regular data warehouse. So how is this slow changing dimension type one implemented in Talent Studio with Delta Lake? It's very simple. Basically you have an incoming update data set, which can be coming from a regular file or can be coming from another database or any other source that we support at Talent. And then we're writing into a Delta Lake table that already exists. And we use the merge capability here um, highlighted. What we also do is we need to select what we're merging on. In this case, is the name. Could be uh, multiple um, items that we merge on. And then we need to decide what we do in any case. When the merge condition is fulfilled, we will update that specific record. We can update all of the record or we can update only a subset of the fields. And when it's not merged, uh, we will do the insert. So this first update is very simple. Uh, let's take a look at the more complex use case. Let's talk about slow changing dimension type 2. This was a very common pattern of how things were done in the old data warehouse world and maybe still something you would want to do on Delta Lake. Uh, keep in mind that there is a out of the box functionality called time travel where which allows you to see a specific version of the data from a specific uh, date in data Delta Lake, Databricks Data Lake, but this is not what I'm uh, talking about here. Here I'm going to actually build a slow changing dimension type 2 table with historization. So let's see this example. For a specific uh, record for customer ID 1, you would have, let's say the customer type is corporate, you will have a start date and an end date for the validity of the record, and in some case you also have a, a Boolean um, type that would say whether or not this uh, record is still active, which it is in the initial state. Now we have an update for that record and the update might just say this uh, customer ID 1 is no longer a, a corporate type, it's a retail type. And the way it needs to look after we finish the update, we will still have the first record, although now it's only going to be valid from 2010 until the current moment where I made the update, which is uh, August 6. And we also changed the current flag to false. In addition, you'll get a new record that says this is a retail customer now and this is valid from now until the end of time and the validity is now true. Now before we take a look at the talent solution for this, let's take a look at the SQL statement using Delta Lake Merge that can solve this problem. It's not a very straightforward uh, query to understand because it has to have an internal subquery that does a union to create two records out of the incoming data set with one record. One record is going to be used um, to make the valid record as no longer valid and the end date to now and the other record is going to create the new record that is valid from now until the end of time and will be uh, true for the current flag. There's actually more than one way to achieve the same thing with a talent job. You could build a more sophisticated flow that generates these two records, the one valid and one non-valid record. But here we are using the very basic way. We're just getting the new record from the incoming update data set that has only one record set. And we need to generate also the invalid and the valid records with the T Delta Lake output component. What this component allows you to do is to select either if you want uh, to use a data set as is incoming from the talent flow or to build a SQL on top of the 
of this data set. That SQL will later have also an alias. In this case, it's called stage updates because you remember the result of this SQL is actually a table. And then you can use this uh, table alias name to uh, select your merge statement conditions. First, what you merge on, here will be the merge key that we created in that table. Then you can have what um, a configuration for what you will do when the, mesh, the merge condition is met. You are going to update um, the existing table with false to be non, no longer valid and the end date to be now. And then later uh, for the records that are new, in this case you will create an insert, but you will not insert everything as is. You will use um, the high date for the end date and now for the start date and true for the current flag. So you see this component gives you quite a powerful flexibility to uh, facilitate this merge statement with a UI. We'll jump quickly to slow changing dimension type 4 because it's a complementary step to slow changing dimension type 2 that we just created where you take the historized table that you just created in type 2 and you select only the currently active records. In order to do this we create a talent job that selects from the existing type 2 table only the currently valid records. You can do this uh, directly with SQL with this component which makes it very very convenient. Obviously you can read all of the table and use any of the other talent components like filter to select only the valid ones but here with the SQL um, component with a SQL possibility in the component you can do it straightforward and then create the type 4 table directly. Let's talk about schema evolution in the context of Delta Lake tables. What happens if we want to append a new data set to an existing table but the new data set has a different schema with maybe some new additional columns that the original table does not have? In this, in this case, we already have an existing table with run re one record and three columns. We are going to append and insert a new record into this table, but this new record will have a slightly different schema. It will have two of the already existing columns, customer ID and customer name, but it also has a new column that we don't have in the table. Now, in a normal database, you would ex expect here to have an error because a normal data warehouse or database does not allow to add new columns to an already existing table. But here we use the merge schema functionality in the data lake output component in talent and that allows, uh, allows us a, a great deal of flexibility in interacting with existing tables. So you see since we merge the schema now we are going to get the new record inserted customer ID number two we also get a new column, evolution column, with a value for the new record. The old records are going to get populated with now because we don't have a value for them. And also see that we didn't provide the customer type for the second record, so it's going to be now. This gives you a quite a lot of flexibility in schema evolution, uh, unlike dealing with normal files or dealing with normal relational databases and data warehouses. Last point for today is the optimize and z-order commands you can run on delta tables. This is another function that runs only on a Databricks cluster. With delta tables, one can optimize the layout of the data in two different ways. Optimize will make sure that the table is written into evenly balanced data files, which help optimizing processing and querying of the table. If you want to only partially rebalance the table, you can use the where condition which will help you save costs of optimizing big tables over and over again. Keep in mind that optimize is probably a command that you would want to run on a specific cadence to ensure the tables remain in that optimized state. Z order allows you to optimize queries by specific columns that are more often read together. Those columns will be physically co-located co on the disk. Of course, the more columns you specify in the Z order, that will make it less effective. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.